Welcome back to Tying Tuesday. Brady with you once more. Today we're gonna to tie a little yellow stone fly. This is the Iron Sally, doing a jig style today. So we got it inverted on our vise, uh, kind of true jig style where all of that backing material is toward the hook gape so that when it's right in the water, it's riding uh, sort of true in that sense. And we're gonna start, we got our bead already on our hook as I usually do. We'll start with it upright here on the Umqua. This is the Super Jig. It's the XC400BL, so a nice barbless, uh, kind of standard style jig hook with that 60 degree bend on the eye there. And we can go right into it with our thread. The good old UTC 70 denier in yellow. And so we'll just dress our hook pretty quickly there. And then I like to make sure that my bead's not going to move around on me because I'm going to reposition this hook later. So we'll do some quick thread damming to keep that in place. And then I can walk on back and we'll go to tie in our tail. And the tail on this is a pretty traditional material as far as stonefly nymphs go. The good old Goose Biots. So we got the yellow Goose Biots here. It's a nice strong yellow color from Wopsy. And we'll pick a couple, we'll pick a pair here and go ahead and pull those off. And we can trim off the butt section so we have some working material here. And you can tie these in two at a time, one at a time, whatever suits you. We'll do them um, the length of the body there. Right on the back on either side of the shank. A couple quick securing wraps for that one. Mirror it on the other side. And then we can walk on up and I like to use these biots to help build my body profile, so I'll just kind of continue to work them as I go. Also keeps them in place nicely. We're going to do a wire wrapped body, so at this point we want to make sure that we keep a nice smooth overall taper. And that UTC is really nice for that because it's such a smooth thread that lays nice and flat. From there we'll do our next material, and that is going to be our wire, so we got our UTC wire in gold, and I'm using a medium size today. The hook we're tying on is a size 10. You can do this in a variety of sizes. So we can fix that right on the side here, work on back, and then this is the point that I'm going to flip my fly. So I'm going to do a quick half inch so nothing moves on me. And then we'll flip it over. So I just like to take it right out of the vise, flip it over, sort of use the vise to split my biot tails because I don't want to clip them in there. And then we'll keep the wire to the side. And now we're going to work on this fly the rest of the way, hook point up. So you definitely got to watch out for it as you're tying. Next material we have here is the uh, backing material. This is going to get wrapped in along with the wire and I have the thin skin in black here. I like this because I can cut a nice thin sheet. This is another material that you wouldn't really want to do this with with your new scissors. But cut a nice thin sheet. It's smaller than the eighth inch scud back you might use otherwise and it's going to match up real nicely there. Then we want to remove the backing to this. And go ahead and tie it in right on top. And 
Since that hook's kind of in the way, I sort of tie on the back side here. And again, I'm gonna tie this the full length of the body so that it's nice and smooth. I don't have a point where that material's gonna run out and then I got a bump in the body. But we'll sneak it and sort of roll it over the top there. And then just checking to make sure that I'm all the way back before I start to walk forward on it. And same thing we did like with the biots, just kind of making sure that that's laying fairly consistent overall to make our lives easy here in a moment. And right on up to that thorax region where again we'll half hitch and start working with our wire. So I like to do one wrap of wire down and over and then I'm going to cut right in front of it and this is the hardest wrap. You really got to kind of work it right back up against itself. And then we're going to do three more. Same thing, just kind of working it back. When you're working under that hook point, you really got to kind of manipulate the materials. So that's two. We got three. Nice and snug. And then four. And then we're gonna fold down this material over the top of that and bring one wrap over the backing. You kinda wanna roll it down and go over it, trying to keep it right on top there. Checking your wraps so that they're nice and tight as you go. And we're gonna pull it back and do that same pattern over again. So one, followed by two and three there. Once we get past this hook point, we'll be able to wrap them tighter without having to remaneuver them. We got two, three, and four. Pull that backing over again. And then wrap on top of it. Trying to keep it on top here. And then we'll go again underneath. And just repeating that step. Definitely a cumbersome tie. Anytime you're working with wire, anywhere from a copper john or your brassies and things like that can be somewhat tedious, but then when you add this backing material in, just adds an element of complexity. I think it's worth it with the look that you get out of this fly. So now that we're past that hook point, it's a lot easier to maneuver. Four underneath, one right on top. And I go right up to the bead. We're gonna cover some of this up, but I don't mind adding a little extra weight. So we'll finish it right up front. Especially when you're fishing a jig hook, you can go as heavy as you'd like. So now that we're all the way up front, we'll clip that extra off and capture our wire. And move on to the thorax region. So again, I am gonna use my scissors on this wire, clip it out. Medium tends to be the only wire I actually cut just because it's so thick it can be hard to break off. And then I'm gonna walk back to where I wanna lay that backing material. So a little ways back on this fly, we're gonna give ourselves some room to work with here. Almost even to that halfway point. Maybe a third, if you call that a little, a little close to a third. 
Uh, and then the next material. So the next material we have is turkey tail, good old turkey tail, which is a nice natural backing material. I went ahead and I glued my turkey tail, let it kind of condition. Just helps keep it stiff, prevents it from pulling apart. Turkey tail can kind of separate really easily. So if you glue it, I just find it's a little easier to work with. And I'm going to clip out just a small amount here. And we're going to use that as our backing. You can still split off some if you need to thin it out a little bit. I want that to be about the same size in width there as the overall body that I'm creating. And I'm going to tie it in to start upside down. Go ahead and square it off. And then tie it in so that it lands right on top. With some securing wraps. And then we're going to kind of fold this over. So I grab my bodkin here, pull it back a little ways and fold it over. Creating a crease there. And then securing that in place just to add a little texture to that backing. We can clip out our excess and we can save this piece for later on there. And then we're going to start to dub and add legs. The dubbing for this I'm using today is a Kaufman's. This is the Golden Stone. It's a little bit darker than the overall body, but it, I think it blends well onto this yellow Sally style fly. And this first dubbing noodle here is going to be real small. Just a nice quick noodle. as a prop for our first set of legs. So a few wraps there and then some crystal flash. So we got some black crystal flash here. The nice natural black color. It's got a little green in it. And I want just one strand out of the pack there. You can pull it right on out. And this will be the back legs, this first piece. So I'm gonna add to length on this side. And you can see that dubbing prop there sort of helps to kind of make it stick outward off the body. We'll do a couple wraps, bring it over to the far side and wrap it in to match the near side or vice versa for you guys. And we'll clip that to length. And then we can add a little more dubbing and work on up to the other backing material and the final set of legs. It's a nice summertime bug. You can fish it year round. Obviously these nymphs live in the water systems year round. You might find it most effective in the summer months when yellow sallies are really moving and hatching and kind of coming off the bottom. But definitely a fun fly to fish. And at this part I like to give it probably twice what we did with that first dubbing noodle. And then we're gonna add that other piece of turkey that we left waiting for us. So that one's right, actually I'm gonna pick a new one just cause that was a little split. So we'll take our, our turkey again here and clip a new piece that matches. And this time we're gonna tie it in um, with the nice side facing up and just one layer so we can lay it right on top here and secure it down and it flares up and off there nicely. This one broke but I actually kind of like the way it looked. So I'm just going to leave that. Happy accident sort of situation. And then we'll do our second set of legs, actually a little more dubbing before I do the second set of legs. One little dubbing noodle. Over top of that turkey. And then we'll do the second set of legs, same material, the crystal flash. I got one laying around here somewhere. And this time I'm gonna tie it in on either side because we're going to use both kind of the rearward facing and the forward facing legs. So we'll do a couple of wraps, locking that down, 
trim it to length there and then match it on the other side with a couple of quick wraps and trim it off like so. So now we got six set of sets of legs overall, pretty micro, really fine legs. And then if we want, we can kind of use a little bit of dubbing to manipulate these. So if I wanted them to stick out a little bit more, I can come up with some dubbing, sneak behind it there for those middle legs. And then sneak back in front so that they're all kind of splaying out in different directions, spider-like. And one more material. We're going to do more of the goose buyout on the front as antenna. So same thing we did as the tail. We'll take a couple and tie them in on either side. So one set. And these sort of match up with the front legs. It's okay if they kind of marry. A couple wraps to secure that. Make sure I don't clip out my other sets of legs. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Measure our length. I'm going to finish it with one more dubbing noodle just to kind of cover up those butt sections, help kind of lock the antenna biots in place. And then all it needs is the same way we finish all our flies, or at least how I finish all my flies. A nice secure whip finish. So a really neat bug. Just utilizes some kind of traditional tying aspects mixed in with some more modern aspects. Fishes really well. I like the crystal flash legs on here because I think they kind of give that tickle effect, right? If you're kind of flowing through Fish gets tickled by those even if they don't see them, which they will with that kind of shimmery effect that they're going to provide. Uh, they might, you know, turn and eat it real quick. So just a real neat stonefly nymph. Uh, definitely works great on the jig style if you're willing to sort of fight that hookup. You can tie it on a traditional shank as well. Makes it a little bit easier overall. But either way, a very fishy fly.